today I will be reviewing Braxton Family Values Season 5, Episode 25. And if I was in charge of naming this show, I would have named it, I could be friends with whoever the hell I want to be friends with. So back the hell up. That's what I would have called it. I don't know what you would have called it, but let's talk By about it. By far, Tamar has to be my favorite person on this show. I have loved her for years, but I'm starting to see Tamar has a dark side, okay? She, she can be fun and funny as hell to hang around. And then there's this alternative Tamar that comes to light. I'll tell you what I'm so talking about. So let's start about. with the scene where she sits her father down. Because So last week, they had a heart-to-heart -heart talk with their father and his new wife. And everybody got to say how they felt. And they walked away saying, you know, all is forgiven. But we're not ready to forge the relationship with you, Dad, that you want us to have with your new wife. He wants her at all the family functions and one big happy family mode. And they just ain't there yet. I get it. I get it. There is nothing wrong with this. Some people feel like you that's holding a grudge. No. What part is that holding a grudge? A grudge is when you hold something against someone and you don't let it go. Okay? That has nothing to do with who you choose to be your damn friend. Now do it. Now, don't confuse the two. Don't confuse the two. They have forgiven their father and Miss Wanda and anybody else for this whole divorce situation. It's over. It's in the past. Years ago. I believe they said 14 years ago. But that does not mean every family function we have to see Miss Wanda's ass. Okay? This is, this is not going to happen. Not going to happen. So she sat her dad down and had a heart to heart. She was like, you know, listen. Last night was cathartic. We got it all out on the table and it was good that we had it. But what you're asking me to do is to invite Miss Wanda to everything. Not gonna happen. I ain't there yet. I ain't there. Yet. And she used those exact words. I'm not there yet. Now you could tell he took it hard. He took it hard, but he had no choice but to give in to her wishes. That's the way she's rolling. That's it. Either, you know, it's us individually or you know this this whole relationship thing can be in danger okay man she has every right to it every damn right to it but what her dark side is starting to trip me out is the same scenario that she's telling her father she doesn't apply it to herself so, so last month the sisters made it extremely clear to each and every one of them they were all on the same page even to the audience, made it clear to our asses. This is a family trip, no spouses. If you speak Spanish, no esposas, no spouses, no esposo, no esposos. It was very clear. Then out the damn blue, not only does Tamar announce to the group that I'm not listening to a damn word y'all say, my damn husband's coming, I'm, I'm paraphrasing here because she didn't be this blunt with it. She was like, oh, I show Miss Vince. But I'm going to tell you what she meant by it. I'm going to bring my husband and my son on this damn trip no matter what anybody say. And I don't give a damn what you think. I just not realized she has the same qualities as Mr. Braxton. Like, what the hell, Tamar? What the hell? You didn't like it done to you when he tried to dump Miss Wanda on your lap? What makes you think your sisters like it when it's done to them? Like, you didn't like it when... Do you remember when you hated Gabe? <laughs> Couldn't stand the ground he walked on. You would have had a fit if Trina did this to you. So, Tamar's dark side is she goes through periods where she doesn't give a damn about anybody else's feelings but her own. Still like her. She's still my girl. But you have a dark side. Now, you're, you're not my friend. I don't know if I can have a friend like that in real life. You're great for television, but in the friend category, that's a little selfish, don't you think? But you're making a bigger problem out of this Vince situation. I don't even think you're realizing what you're doing. You are forcing, okay? Forcing, I have to say it like that. Forcing your siblings to hate the hell out of Vince. Because it's not that they don't like him, but every time you see your sister, you don't want to see the plus one. This is the same shit you explained to your daddy. I don't want to see the plus one. That doesn't mean they hate Vince. They're just not in the mood for Vince. They were in the mood for a family 
all the girls vacation. Not all the girls plus Vince ass. And I just think it's very unfair of you to do it. Not only did you bring them on over anyway, you didn't listen to a word anybody had to say, you planned a birthday party for them. <laughs> like, their feelings do not matter. All that matters is this is Vince's birthday. Well, if Vince's birthday was the priority for you in your life, then why the hell did you come on the trip or didn't you reschedule the damn trip? Like, I can't come this week because this is Vince's birthday. What you did was dead ass wrong. It was dead ass wrong and it breaks down the foundation of any trust you may have or friendship with your sisters. Because if I have to always worry about your feelings and you don't return the favor, chow, you know, I get cold with them people real damn quick. Now, while you're great for television, I don't know how you do in the friend category. Like, mm, child, please. My friend is a must. You got to take my damn feel feelings in consideration. Or, you know, I just spray you with a shot of bitch be gone. And That's last but not least, we have my favorite, Miss Evelyn. I love, 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 love Miss Evelyn. So she went to dinner, brunch, I don't know, some restaurant. You know, they go to a restaurant at least four or five times an episode. They was at another one. And uh, she was with Trina and T Tawanda this time. And she was just, they were talking about the trip and letting them know that, you know what? I don't think what Mr. Braxton did was cool by bringing uh, Miss Wanda, just showing up out of no damn where. And, you know, I hear he wants you girls to um, start embracing her. You can do whatever the hell you want. Now, you know, she doesn't talk like this, but, you know, I got to talk to tell it in layman's terms. You Y'all can do what the hell y'all want, but I'm done with their asses. I do not want to be involved. My life is too good. And I don't feel like dealing with them assholes. Now, she didn't use that exact word, but this was the premise of the conversation. What I, and I get it, I get it, I get it, I get it. So in the interview, Trina says, I think there's still some hurt there. This pisses me off. Why does it have to be hurt there? People get forgiveness mixed up with hanging the hell out. Forgiveness had nothing to do with hanging the hell out. Listen. Papa Braxton just showed, you know, he has a good side, but then he has a lot of asshole tendencies. And she has a right to choose not to be friends with any asshole she don't want to be friends with. She, her life is good. This does not mean she's holding on to animosity. She greets him, talks to him when it's in the situations that are appropriate, but on her off time at the family barbecue, I don't feel like rolling with them. I ain't sharing no barbecue with them. This is her right. But when you say, I think there's a little hurt there, it kind of diminishes her stance. She's not, I do not think she has any animosity, grudge, whatever. That divorce is over. She has moved on. But why must she be forced to befriend Miss Wanda? Like, I, I have every right to pick my friends. I would throw a hissy fit. A hissy fit if my mom just came over with some girl I don't know and be like, this is your new friend. You must be friends with No! I must not do shit. I must pick my own friends. Miss Evelyn must pick her own life and who she wants to be in her life. So you guys got to chill. I mean, if you don't like hanging around her, why would she? I just think Miss Evelyn is the best mother on television. I'm Loving Miss Evelyn. And she did a good job raising her children. And she did a good job raising her children after this divorce. She still, she didn't run off. She still let her children know, I'm here for you. I love you. You all have unique personalities. But at the end of the day, I'm your mother. And that's something the father didn't do. Now, it, he admits it's a mistake. But that mistake. You know, choices come with consequences. Isn't that what Barack Obama said? Elections have consequences. Choices have consequences. And so you chose to have an affair and run off from your family. Now, I don't know if Miss Wanda was the woman in the affair or not. It doesn't matter. The choice is you chose not, the point is you chose not to be in the family anymore. So you should just be glad that they even accept you at this point. Stop trying to throw Miss Wanda on everybody. And Tamar, stop trying to throw Vince on everybody. This is going to backfire on you. I mean, 
if you just let everything happen organically, they might be the best of buds with Vince, but you are forcing, forcing them to see Vince when they ain't in the mood. And it ain't nothing worse than somebody trying to make you do some shit when you ain't in the mood to do it. I mean, you should know. You're very opinionated. But this is why I love the show. Real life, real life. I mean, I could have the same problem. Now, I, I could, because I have a sister too with a husband. I might have the same problem. I ain't saying. I'm not saying if I have the same problem. Like, my sister could be throwing her husband on me. I'm not saying. Because, you know, this is not the polite thing to do. But what I'm saying is, they're not the only people on the planet with these problems. That's why I love this show. So, I'll be back for next episode. Thanks for watching. Until next time, talk to you then. Bye. <laughs>